Hey, what's up guys? John here. In 2017, there were roughly 8 million individual investor landlords all across the country collecting about $300 billion in rent annually. In 2019, according to a HUD user on HUD.gov, there were between 10 and 11 million individual investor landlords. Well, over the last couple of years, 2021, 2022, there was a mania in the real estate market. Everybody wanted to be a real estate investor, a landlord, an Airbnb guru. Everyone wanted to own rentals. We can all agree that there's definitely more landlords today than there were several years ago. And if 2019, they were estimating that there's between 10 and 11 million individual investor landlords, you have to wonder, how are they gonna hold on this year? Because what's happening in the real estate market, nobody else is talking about, but this is gonna push millions of landlords out of the business, and we are gonna start to see foreclosures in a lot of rental properties to likes which we've never before seen ever in America. The nation is seeing a spike in foreclosures. Foreclosure filings across the country are up 36% from a year ago. Far clips in what we witnessed in 2008. Here's what I mean. So for example, this. Had two tenants approach me in the past few months about renewing leases at 100 to $200 discounts. I declined both, because you know, I'm good at picking up bluffs and uh, rents always go up in LA. Guess who's to have about to have two units at quite a bit less with a couple months of vacancies sprinkled in. Don't be a hero right now, extend good tenants if you can. Well, there's so many markets. I mean, here, for example, 27 cities where rents are plunging. You know, plunging is a dramatic word, but some of these markets, Scottsdale, rents down 17%. Month over month change down 3.5%. You look at the bloodbath happening in the rental market, you have to ask yourself, how are landlords gonna hold on? got a trillion dollars in debt that has to roll over this year, held by a lot of these landlords. In the U.S. alone, $1.4 trillion of debt coming due. The cost to manage these properties, maintenance, insurance, taxes, all have went up through, it's gone through the roof the last year or so. And now a lot of these landlords got to, you know, renew their loans. And they're not going to be able to, a trillion dollars of these loans. And that will be harder to refinance because A, the cost of borrowing is up, and B, the value of those buildings are down. Billionaires, Barry Starling, and a lot of other ones are discussing the same exact thing. What's gonna happen in office, in multifamily this year? It's gonna be a bloodbath. That's what's gonna happen. And they're sitting with tons of cash getting ready to pounce on all these gurus, all these speculators, all these people that are extremely leveraged that aren't gonna be able to hold on. Because when you see what's really going on, you're going to see one thing, one thing clearly, that it's going to get really, really nasty. Most investors, by the way, they buy these deals, 5% return, 6% return. What happens when rents drop 17%? How do they hold on to that property? Or what if they drop, you know, like Irving, Texas, down 16.1%, or Winston-Salem, down 14.6%, or Greensboro, North Carolina, down 13.9%. There's still 23 other cities where they're seeing, you know, rents crashing. I'm going to break it down and give you the facts to help you and position you. Please hit the like button. When you hit the like button, you double share the content, educate more people about what's really going on in the real estate market and why I think we're walking into it, a massive, massive investing opportunity. And if you'd like to fix your credit, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free strategy session for tomorrow. Let's take a look at this. So, Boise. 12.8% rents down, 12.8%. Augusta, Georgia, 12.5%. Buffalo, New York, 10%. Austin, Texas, 10.2%. Asheville, North Carolina, 8.4%. Arlington, Texas, you know, and you just start to go to some bigger cities. Memphis, Tennessee, down 8.2%. I mean, look at this. Glendale, Arizona, 7.7%. Colorado Springs, 7.6%. I mean, look at Houston, 6.8%. 9%, Oakland, 6.8%, Dallas, San Antonio, you get the idea, Orlando, all these big, big, big markets, you're seeing massive, massive declines. And at the same time that this is all happening, Jacksonville, 5.3%. So all of these markets, at least, bare minimum, down 5%. The, the least impacted market of 27 of these markets is down 5%, right? And since the average investor, buying five, six, 7% return deals, how do they hold on to these deals? When borrowing costs went from 3% to 7.5 or 8%, they're not gonna be able to. They're not gonna be able to. And that's what they're doing right now. These landlords are realizing, you know what? Now's not the time to be greedy. I gotta hold on to these renters. I have to hold on. 
So they're offering concessions. Hey, sign up, you know, first month, last month for free. You know, we'll, uh, we'll take care of your dog. We'll do dog sitting. You know, they're, they're offering all these different types of concessions to try to hold on to tenants because one of a couple reasons. The first is when they have a vacancy and they need to renew their loan and they're not able to show that income from that tenant that has left, that's gonna impact their ability to get that financing. But if they can sign a lease at say two grand a month, 1,800 bucks a month, and they give first month and last month rent, you know, they're still sign that tenant's still signing on a 12 month lease at that rent rate. And so it's gonna still help that landlord dramatically. They would rather do that than reduce rents up front. But soon they're not gonna be able to. Like, look at this. Twin Cities apartment deals are hot as landlords offer concessions. Rental market tracker, landlords are charging near record rents, but offering concessions. These are the effects landlord concessions have on apartment rents. The future rent, the rental market is softening so fast in some pockets, of the country that landlords have no choice but to offer concessions. So as this is beginning to happen, like look, average rents fall in Nashville area as vacancy rates highest in 20 years. And what they said here is for comparison, Nashville rent prices grew 14%, 5.7%, 3.9%, and 5.2% in 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020, respectively. They dropped 7.8% in 2021 before surging again. One out of every three apartment communities offered concessions last year, including move-in deals of up to two months free rent, including real estate investment firm, according to real estate investment firm, Matthews. And so all these landlords that were cashing out 2018, 2019, 2020, you know, they they cashed out and then a lot of investors bought this big story that we have this massive, massive shortage in housing. We need to build tons of luxury apartments in all these cities. And uh, there's a massive supply that's hitting the market that's gonna be competing with a lot of these existing landlords. So when you see rents right now, you know, dropping a lot of these markets, you know, five, 10, 15, 20%, you know, what's gonna happen when you have a 50 year high of apartment supply hitting the market this year or next year? Rents are gonna to continue to fall. They're gonna to continue to fall. And where are interest rates going? They're not gonna be going down in the short term. That's for sure. Look at the CPI report. Look at the jobs report. Jerome Powell said he's not gonna cut rates until he sees unemployment rise and you know, inflation starts to come down closer to 2%. That's not happening. So we're gonna see rates higher for longer, most likely. Now, billionaire CEO sees one trillion in commercial real estate defaults coming, very, very ugly market the next two years. Now, commercial real estate is not just office. It's also multifamily, five units above, it's industrial, you know, it's commercial real estate, right? Commercial real estate as a whole. You have a trillion dollars worth of loans that are gonna be coming, these are defaults coming, right? This isn't just like loans, these are one trillion dollars of commercial real estate defaults coming, right? This is gonna become, very interesting and what I think is going to be the best opportunity to go out there and invest. Billionaire investor, central credit, very, very ugly market in commercial real estate and Moody's Bank just downgraded a key regional bank to junk status. Now this is the same billionaire, Barry Starlet. He's the, he's the founder and CEO of Starwood Capital. They bought and sold over 170,000 apartments all throughout America. They have offices all over the world. They're probably one of the most dominant players inside of the real estate market. There's an interview of Barry in 2008, 2009, making a prediction about the future of commercial real estate and residential real estate in the coming several years. And his predictions on each market, what he said was gonna happen, happened perfectly. And he's making another prediction right now on multifamily. And his prediction, he's making alongside another CEO. And this CEO, Howard Lutnick, Cantor Fitzgerald, who is a CEO of Howard Lutnick, for between 700 billion dollars or trillion dollars worth of commercial real estate defaults over the next two years. So Barry is saying a trillion, and this man saying 700 to a trillion, right? So in that realm, you're gonna to start to see a tsunami of defaults. But what I think is very, very fascinating right now is that as this is happening, you're seeing real estate insurance go through the roof, right? There's climate insurance, insurance crisis leaves homeowners vulnerable, in limited home insurance options in California, Oregon homeowners face soaring premiums, climate, coastal property risk, all this, you know, this is just in the last several days, last three to five days, right? So you have insurance going up, you have taxes going up. Lawmakers scramble to address anticipated 20% tax hike. Why property taxes and values are up everywhere. Marysville homeowners pay an additional $818 more in property taxes. Taxes are going up 15% in Cumberland County. You know, this is page after page after page. And this is, you know, the past month. Right, just to be clear, this is only going back the past month, past week. Your property tax is likely going up again. Property tax is fair. So you look at what's happening. You're going to see 
all these institutional players realizing the big opportunity is going to be rentals going forward the next couple of years. And that's why you're seeing Invitation Homes gearing up to make some really, really big moves. They're, they're going to put a billion dollars to work. And what they're buying is they're buying direct communities from builders. So these builders aren't going to go out there and sell them to you and sell houses to you, sell them to me, sell them to our mothers, sisters, and brothers. No, no, no. They're going to go sell them to these large hedge funds, these really big players who will pay more for these properties and they'll buy the entire community in one shot. And that's what's happening. And what Invitation Homes is doing is they are they're leveraging technology. And they're not just going to be, you know, looking at the upside from reducing their management fees, but they're also adding value add services, upsells, smart home offerings, internet bundles. They're offering all these different ways in which they can extract more cash and capital from each and every tenant. So they have some really, really, really big things in the works. Now, what I think is going to happen is as they continue to buy out these communities over the next year or so, we're going to see more and more and more smaller shops, smaller private equity firms running out there buying individual office deals, individual multifamily deals. And it's going to be it's going to be a really, really, really big opportunity to make a lot of money. Because look at what's happening right now to the everyday American. The average rent in America, they range it between 1372 on Forbes. Um, you know, rent.com is saying, you know, current national is around 1967. They, they say 1496, right? So 1388, probably somewhere around 1700 bucks. It's probably going to be somewhere around the national average for a one bedroom, right? Well, to buy even a $400,000 home, you're looking at $2,677 and you're going to need, if you put, that's if you put 20% down. Most people are putting 6% down. First time buyers average 6% down. So you go from about 1700 rent or pay double and buy, right? Who's going to do that in an environment right now where food prices are growing up, everything's going up? Not many people are going to be able to do that. And so what's going to happen is you're going to see a lot of property owners that own these properties that want to sell, but maybe they don't have that, you know, that buyer they thought that they had. So they're going to try to rent them out. You're going to start seeing so much inventory hit the market. Rents are going to continue to likely soften. At the same time, this wave of distress is coming with multifamily and commercial. It's going to present a situation where you're going to see this number, you know, 8 million landlords in 2017, uh, right here, to they said 10 to 11 million individual, individual investor landlords in 2019. You're going to see this number over the next couple of years drop dramatically. If I had to make a prediction, I would say from now over the next six years, we'll see this number drop 70 or 80 percent. Like We're going to see so many curveballs coming to this real estate market that many people are not yet ready for. Now, Americans are spending the biggest share of their income on food in three decades. Who do you think Americans are going to prioritize, themselves and their children or their landlord? They're going to prioritize their self right? Feeding themselves, not feeding their landlord. We're going to see evictions continue to rise. A record number of Americans can't afford their rent three weeks ago. One is too many increases in Lexington eviction following the end of housing stabil stabilization program. I mean, Medicare enrollment cuts lead more evictions. Renters in England face evictions. This is happening all over the world, right? What is a no-fault eviction? Why is the government banning them? So eviction notices are on the rise in these states. Evictions continue to rise as post-era, you know, what do you think about this situation? Where do you see this all going? Do you think we're going to see millions of landlords leave the business over the next year or so? Do you think we're walking into the greatest investing opportunity in real estate history here in America? Drop below. Let's have a conversation about this. I personally think that the U.S. dollar is definitely going to erode in purchasing power over the coming decade. Every year it's going to get a little softer, a little softer, a little softer. And owning real hard assets, having real, you know, real owning something real is going to be what's going to matter. Owning something real. The dollar is not as real as they would like us to believe. What do you think about this entire situation? Drop below. If you'd like to fix your credit, we'd love to help you. At my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you want to invest in distressed real estate, if you have big goals and ambitions, make sure your credit score is in line with your goals. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item on your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free strategy session for tomorrow. Catch you next video.